Good evening, everybody. Thanks for coming. Uh, I'd like to call our Tuesday, August 13th business meeting to order. Um, first item is Pledge of Allegiance. Our lead us, please. I find the leader to the and to the republic for which he stands, one nation under God, in the scope of liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Jerry, would you please remind us of our um, goals? Yes. In school district um, 44, um, we have four main goals. Each student will improve academically each year. Our schools will be safe, inclusive, and welcoming. And we will strengthen family and community engagement and support partnerships for student learning. And the fourth is we will maintain and improve our facilities to meet the current and future needs of our students, um, the staff, and community. Thank you very much. Are there any revisions to tonight's agenda? Um, is there any public comment? <laughs> this item is the appropriate place to make the comment on an item not on the agenda but within the board's jurisdiction. Each action item on the agenda has its own public comment period. Any public comment? Yeah. Right along. Uh, any public correspondence that has been received is next, which we don't have any. Um, approval of minutes. I'll move we approve. I'll second. Moved by Kim. I'm going to make this all in favor. Approved. Approved. <laughs> Uh, but everybody, Jerry was non voting because Rainy is online. Thank you, Rainy. You're welcome. <laughs> and I don't think we have a WEA or WCEA retort. We're magically online on the day. Yeah, do you have anything? No, it's you like the But Jake, it is going to be the Jake show tonight. It's fun. You're actually going to be here in person, Jake, instead of in another room. So, first of all, their AI update, artificial intelligence. We like to start on that all So, hello. Um, so, yes, wanted to talk a little bit about uh, AI and how we're Wait. starting. Oh, sorry. Yep. I forgot. Oh, so sorry, Jake. Can we back up? I can back up. I apologize. I missed it. Yeah, the Jake. I missed the, the wrong Jake. Okay. Snoker. Oh. Interesting report. I apologize. Uh, I don't currently have anything. Okay, <laughs> never mind. Other yeah. Jake's yeah. going on. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Sorry about that. It was at the bottom of my page and I just missed it. I'm sorry, Jacob. Jake, and now on to Jacob. All, All right. right. Okay. So, AI, hello again. Um, <laughs> Uh, we started looking at generative AI um, in the district last year, um, started looking at uh, ways that we could use it to help teachers and students um, in, in a variety of ways. Uh, and of course, one of the, the biggest issues with AI usage right now is uh, no one or not many of the larger AI companies want to sign any type of data privacy agreement because, of course, that's how they teach their, their models. So they want all the data they can have. Uh, and of course, that doesn't work well with student data. Um, so we looked at a variety of different programs, um, and, you know, and, and there were a lot of neat ones out there, but not many were willing to work with schools to keep uh, student data private. Um, so that was, that was kind of one of our, our big issues. And the, the other issue was um, there were a lot of companies that uh, had a lot of the kind of like the chatbot model which was, you know, you could go talk to the AI, AI and ask it questions, uh, and it'd give you answers, and it will definitely answer any math question you give it, um, you know, and won't, won't uh, worry about if it should give you the answer or not. Uh, it'll write you a 20-page paper on anything you want to know about, and you can tell it to write it at whatever grade level you want, and, you know, and it doesn't care if that's going to cause issues at school or not. Um, so that, of course, is, a, is an issue for, for us as a school district. Um, so what we started looking at and kind of honing in on is a, a program called uh, Magic School AI. And uh, Magic School, so one thing right off the bat that was nice is they were willing to sign a student data privacy agreement with us. 
uh, to keep all of our student data uh, private. And you know that gives us kind of teeth for if anything happens with our data that we have some recourse with them. Uh, so they're a little more um, stringent with how that, that data is used, of course. Um, and so Magic School, uh, we do have a uh, license this year for all students and staff to use it. And so for staff, there's there's a ton of tools in here. And it's not just kind of like the chatbot model that you hear about with like ChatGPT or, or uh, Gemini or Claude or anything like those. Um, so they have a, a chatbot, but uh, it has guardrails on it. Um, so if you're a student and you go say, hey, here's my math problem, answer this for me, it won't do it. It'll say, hey, you know, no, can't do that. But we can work together on this math problem to figure it out if you're having trouble with it. Uh, and so you can, as a student, you can work through it by either typing in the problem or even showing a picture as you're working on it uh, by hand. And, you know, and it'll say, well, oh, it looks here like you may have trouble because you forgot to carry the, the zero or something. Um, so, so, you know, so it'll kind of step you through as a tutor for students to help them figure out where they may have messed up with the program or with the, the problem. Uh, and same thing with like a, a writing prompt. Um, if you say, hey, I've got this uh, uh, assignment to write a two page paper on uh, something in World War II. They'll say, okay, well, what about World War II do you want to write about? Um, you know, and they'll start asking questions to kind of get you thinking about um, more details. And they'll say, okay, well, here's some good resources for you to look at that kind of dig into that topic. Uh, so it'll help you kind of find resources, uh, but it won't write the paper for you. Uh, when you're done with the paper, then it can look at it and say, okay, this is good, but maybe the wording here is a little strange. Uh, maybe try this again with this in mind. Um, so it's it's kind of a a neat experience for students as well, because it's kind of like having that that feedback just instantaneously. Uh, you don't have to wait for a teacher to respond. Um, you know, it can kind of help you out as you as you go. Um, the other nice part about that is, as a teacher, you get to see everything that the student asks the the AI. Uh, so you can check it out and, and see exactly what uh, students are saying to the AI and what the AI is saying back to them. So there's that kind of accountability piece there uh, as well. Um, so besides that, then there's all other kinds of cool tools uh, for, for teachers. Um, there is uh, like an email responder that kind of helps with uh, creating email responses, um, one with um, creating like, a questionnaire. So you can say, okay, here's a YouTube video. It might be a 30-minute YouTube video um, that you're going to want your students to watch. Um, and you can say, okay, create me 20 um, true or false questions or 20 uh, multiple choice questions based on this YouTube video, and it'll spit out your, your questions for you. Um, you can ask it to, um, try to think what else, uh, well, you can have it help grade, uh, so you can give them a, a, like a paper that they've written or math problems, and it'll grade it for you. Um, you can have it um, do like a, a reading leveler, so you can take a whole um, chapter of a textbook or something and adjust that to a different grade level if you want to, uh, just to accommodate specific students if they're having trouble with, with uh, you know, maybe the, the, the reading level of the con or of the, um, the subject. Um, so there's all different kinds of tools for, for teachers like that. And you can, as a teacher, then also give students access just to the different parts of the AI that you want to have for each class. Uh, so maybe for a particular class, you don't want them to have access to that or not until a certain date, so you can turn it off so they can't even get to it. Um, or you maybe you just want them to have access to uh, one tool and not the others, and you can totally do that uh, for, for each class. Uh, so you can really tailor it to whatever you're wanting to, to do with it. Um, so that's that's kind of what we're looking at uh, using this, this coming year and, and kind of testing it out. Um, when we created an AI committee last year, and we met a couple times to kind of look at already what teachers were, were using, there was already about 20 to 25% of our staff that were already using Magic AI, uh, because the free version was out there, and it was pretty good as well. Um, so it was already a, a pretty highly uh, regarded and uh, had a lot of interest from staff in, in that, uh, that program. So um, also as the AI committee, we met and went over uh, kind of student handbooks and looked at uh, some tweaks to that to kind of help students just be very clear on what was acceptable and what wasn't acceptable as far as AI uh, use. Because, um, of course, we can block other AI programs on our devices and here on the network, but we can't, you know, stop students or staff or whoever from using stuff on their personal devices at home. So um, we really wanted to hone in on kind of that uh, just accountability piece and just make sure that students, um, there wasn't a lot of gray area. So they, you know, have a, a clear understanding of what's 
uh, acceptable or not. So, um, so that's kind of where we're at at the moment. Um, so I'm really excited for this year for students and staff both to be able to use that Magic School AI uh, program because it's it's got some really neat stuff. Uh, one of one of my favorite ones is you can uh, tell it to bring in all of the like the written materials of George Washington and say, okay, now I want you to answer all these questions to my students as if you were George Washington. And so you can kind of have this chat which, with something that sounds like George Washington, he'll answer, it'll answer everything like from that perspective. Uh, and you can do that with pretty much any historical figure. Uh, and so it's a, it's an interesting kind of uh, experience to have that, you know, it's, it's not them, but, uh, <laughs> but it, of course it has all that knowledge from them. And so it, you know, it works to make some interesting conversations uh, and some interesting talking points for, for students and staff and things like that. So um, that's where we're at. Um, we're gonna continue to meet as an AI committee this year. And, and continue to kind of go over uh, staff and student usage and continue to look at new tools. Um, but we're we're really excited uh, that hopefully a lot of these AI tools will help uh, staff free up some kind of that mundane time that they're you know using just to create some some things and give them more time to actually work you know individually with with students. Uh, so that's that's our hope is that it will give them more time with with actually working with students. So um, questions or thoughts? Anybody used AI? Had fun with it? Yeah. Um, one question I had about the math. Yes. It'll correct math problems. Will it also um, report back to the teacher where the errors are? For example, they're all, they're multiplication. They don't know their math multiplication facts, or they're not carrying, like you said. Will it report those back to the teacher? So there are definitely reports the teacher can run um, that will give them a variety of information. I, I don't know if right now it is, is as specific as saying this student is having trouble with their, you know, their math facts with threes and fives and whatever. Um, but it'll say they're having trouble with this type of problem. And it show the teacher, you know, this is the type of uh, problems they were trying to solve. Here are the, the issues they had with it. Um, so the teacher can definitely look at that. Um, I will say Magic School is continuing to add more and more tools to it. Um, and already since the beginning of summer when we had kind of uh, solidified our, um, our choice with that one, they've already added about 30 more tools for, for students and staff. So they're really just pushing ahead. So I, I, I think they'll continue to add a lot of things that'll be helpful for, for staff, so. Will there be um, like professional development for teachers about such? So, yes. So Lisa and I are working together on some things to provide uh, staff some some opportunities. Um, and there are there is quite a gap uh, from people that are using AI and those that haven't touched it at all. Uh, so we want to try and make sure there's some different training for, you know, kind of for everybody. Yes. Um, but um, so one thing we're going to do is something that I did similar when we added some other programs is probably offer some before school and after school, just short snippets as well about very particular tools on there. Uh, so we'll have things like that available for staff starting this fall, um, but we'd still like to have an actual kind of PD uh, event as well for, for everyone. So, because uh, the other is kind of optional and just if you're already interested, you're probably already digging in and have a decent idea of what you're doing anyway. So, um, yeah. It's just so intimidating. Right, without any, if you don't know, yes, it's like a, it's like this unknown. So it's like unknown. Uh, but it has the paid version as well, which gives the students access to it, uh, and also uh, gives us that student data privacy agreement as well. So yes, it does. It, the, the version we have does cost. Reasonable price compared to the others. I just... Yes, I would. About $6 per student per year. Um, so compared to something like Microsoft Copilot, which is about $30 a month uh, per user, or, or Gemini, which is about $400 per user per year. Um, it's it's very reasonable. Um, so yes, the others, yeah, we couldn't afford if we wanted to. Um, but yeah, so this one I was pleasantly surprised. So yeah. Uh, when we went down to the National School Board Conference in New Orleans in the spring, I guess one of, we went to a seminar on AI, and one of the things was like I've never used AI. To me, it's highly intimidating, but not computers either. But you know the presenter, they 
if you don't use it, like it's here. And if you don't use it and you're not comfortable with it, you're going to be left behind. So we have to teach our, our students and really our staff how to use it and how to use it properly. Because if not, they're the ones who are going to get left out of the workforce because it is being taught and it will be used. And companies are going to start integrating it in some capacity. Free for a while, there's a chance to just take advantage of it or anything like that. So, um, and actually, it was one of the things I was like, oh, I hope we start getting some interesting AI stuff like that. So, thank you. And to tie into what you said at the, the Sam conference, even uh, last summer, um, there was a, um, or sorry, the Meta conference, uh, there was um, a uh, company there that they they developed software. And even then, their very first thing they do with anybody that is interviewing is they sit them down with an AI uh, and have them create code with the AI. Uh, and so they have to be able to do that at the very beginning, um, or else they won't even go on to the next step of the interview process. So, um, so yes, it's definitely here, and yeah, students definitely need to know uh, and be comfortable with it to some extent. Um, you know, it's kind of like uh, being able to Google something. You know, if you you take somebody that's never Googled something before and you ask them to look up something, you know, they're going to get all kinds of random stuff. Um, but you know, if you if you're somebody that has been uh, googling things for a while, uh, you know, you know what key phrases to use, what words to use, what words not to use, how to use, you know, um, concatenation, all that kind of stuff to, to really hone in on what you're after. And so it's kind of the same stuff with, with AI. Um, it's it's definitely a good tool that people will uh, need to know how to use in the future. So we feel like we had a survey, like one of our surveys that we had, the question was about like computer literacy yeah. or responsible language. I can't remember the exact digital, 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 digital Yes, yeah. digital citizenship. I have a very specific language yeah. to it. Mm -hmm. I feel like this is a nice response to that as well because we had mixed results I feel like, on that too. I think some of it was there were different impressions of what that definition was um, in the survey itself, but this is another thing just that highlights that it's a important piece. So thank you. Sure. Okay. Um, one more question. Right? Yeah. Just, um, texted in is like is there funding to cover the magic ai magic school ai so i don't know if she's wondering like what pot it's coming out of necessarily or are we getting a grant so fund? i we're paying it out of the, the tech budget at the moment um ideally that's not where it would stay but um at the same time i wanted to make sure we got it paid for this coming year so we found the funding in there for it um the, the problem with that in a long-term solution is that um, to do that, we had to change our refresh cycle on our Chromebooks a little bit. Um, so that's not the ideal long-term solution for it, but um, but for now it's it's there because uh, it's it's important. So we need to get it out and let people start using it, so. Yeah, you're welcome, Jacob. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Anytime. I enjoy uh, talking about AI. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Whitefish High School bond update with new tax and tax amount. Yeah. <laughs> David and Lucy. Yeah. Um. I'll share some information and Lucy will share some information as well. There's some more important tax impact information we want to share this evening. But you, we have already shared a lot of this information in the slideshow. This is primarily the slideshow we use when we share information in our community and in informational sessions. We've been pulling. Um, it's also uh, you know slides that we'll use when we're talking to our staff and others. Uh, um, and Chamber of Commerce or Rotary and other areas where we're providing as much information as we can to as many groups as we can. Um, but this kind of really highlights the big areas that the big changes are that we're splitting the bonds into the academic expansion and the athletic improvements uh, designed to meet the needs of our students in the community for the next 15 to 20 years. And then um, it quickly goes into these. Uh, 10 year October enrollment for 14, 15 through 23, 24. You can see that rate in the high school. It's 2.76%. We talk a lot about 2% growth rate in our district, and that's true. That's for our district. Um, but high school specifically, it's 2.74%.
but we're seeing that growth rate over the last 10 years as 2.74%. We added another slide in here just to update this slide to show what that looks like. So if you're gonna take that 2.74% growth rate at the high school specifically over time, um, that rate, that enrollment projection at 2.74% would be 729, five years. 835 in 10 years, 956 in 15 years, and then 1,094 in 20 years. I think last time we met, we talked about what does it look like in 10 years. We talked about around 800. Well, it looks like it, it would be specifically 835. Uh, if you take that growth rate strictly out statistically. It's important to note, though, I think this is really important, that we're going to see ups and downs. This is a trend line. This is a statistical trend line that we're following. We're going to see ups and downs in our enrollment throughout the years, but this is what is, would be projected if we follow that same trend line out for the next point. And then... Um, Again, you can see here's the district-wide enrollment trend rate. And again, we're going to see ups and downs in that, but it's actually growth is 2.27%. And then um, really just more information that we've reviewed in the past, you know, that improves safety and security. We're reducing student travel to auxiliary buildings, enhancing overall campus security are key components. Of course, we're adding classrooms and labs and shops and renovations to our career and technical education areas, um, expanding science, tech, engineering, arts. Um, you know, based on our community feedback, as you all know, we adjusted uh, the, the athletic component based on that and um, focused on reducing the scope of that athletic improvement spawn. So it would have a new 10 lane track, new district known football field, new grandstands with 1,500 seats, new tickets. information regarding both bonds um, and that they'll be due back by 8 p.m. September 17th. Um, but before we go too much, too, too much further, Lucy was going to share some updates on the tax impact. And that's in the slideshow that I just wanted to review, but she's going to uh, pull up some other, or I can pull up some other information related to the tax impacts or estimated impacts that have changed. Okay, thank you, Dave. Uh, so on August the 5th, uh, the Montana Department of Revenue released new taxable values. They do it every year in August, and no surprise, the taxable values keep going <laughs> uh, for Bloodhead Valley and specifically uh, the Whitefish School District. Um, and you know that the higher the taxable values of all the homes within the district, the higher the value, the lower the tax impact is on each of those individual homes, okay? So um, and compared to the original estimate, uh, the updated estimates for tax impact are now 2.7% lower than they were when we uh, adopted the resolution to go out for the bond back in April. Uh, the table that uh, you can see in front of you uh, shows those differences between the original and updated estimates. Um, the updated numbers are those that will appear on the ballot the ballots have already been printed. 
um, and um, uh, you see those home assets values. Again, the one hundred thousand dollar assets value is a nice multiplier. So uh, uh, residents or uh, you know the community members can look up their assets value and multiply that five hundred thousand dollars. So let's say if somebody home is assessed for tax purposes for $1 million, that would be $14.27 times a year. Not a Any questions on this? I'd just like to add a couple of things. We are going to be sharing more information in, in different ways. We've been sharing the information out via emails and some press releases related to the information uh, about each of the bonds, the dates uh, of the upcoming vote and, and that information. But we will also have our next community engagement meeting on this coming Monday. Um, that will be at the high school at 5.30 p.m. And then we're tonight we have representatives at the farmers market and we will have representatives throughout uh, the next few weeks uh, prior to the bond and providing uh, an opportunity for folks to come up and ask questions and things like that regarding what the bonds are proposing. It's been a great way to interact with whitefish, the whitefish community. We've had a lot of questions and people asking detailed questions about what, what is happening? What is this going to look like? And it's a great way to have those conversations. We've also been sharing out the information um, with local business providers in the downtown area, and they've had some good questions as well. So um, I'm um, hopeful that we're getting out the information so people have the information that they are knowledgeable about their vote. Any questions for any of those here? Thank you. Thank you, and thanks to representatives, you know, to everyone who's going to farmers market and you know having all these conversations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. You got the rain on last. I saw it rains at every farmers every market. Yeah. I see it. <laughs> <laughs> it rains every Tuesday in this town. Guaranteed. I was driving home and I saw you walking through downtown carrying your flyer, looking for businesses. And I've seen them out at a lot of places now, much more so than last time. So that's really, yeah. Thanks for the buffalo when you're waiting. It's just really visible. Yeah, you're visible. It's great. Yeah, it's a great way to have conversations. People stop at me on the streets and say, asking questions, which is great. Great way to have conversations about our schools. Have yeah. there have there been many people coming to your information sessions here? No, not very many. Uh, we've had media there. Um, okay. Covering very few people showing up there, so I think it's been much more effective uh, to go out and about mm -hmm. and also right. be at the farmers market. Those kind of areas that are maybe. Where people are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we'll keep doing those informational sessions and hopefully the next few people will have an opportunity to come to those as well. And also on the back to school bash, we'll have a, a table there for those questions. Yeah, awesome. Coming up on September 12th. Oh, thanks, Jay. Any other questions about that updated bond or the okay. Awesome. Um, well, this is going to be an interesting line item, the pupil mm -hmm. transportation contract renewal. Mm -hmm. um, can you see? Thank you, Darcy. Uh, so as every year, uh, it is time to renew our annual pupil transportation contracts. We have two of those, one for regular routes, i.e. the yellow buses, and then we have another one for activities. Uh, uh, both need to be updated annually. Uh, we uh, left the activity transportation contract, the conditions of it, and the payments exactly the same. Uh, we added a um, uh, couple of uh, couple of sentences regarding, uh, you know, we just updating some wording about how uh, payments and invoicing should uh, should look like. And um, there's also a new motor coach added to the inventory list. 
in appendix or in exhibit A, which is on the last page. Uh, the regular route uh, contract uh, after negotiations with uh, the new uh, Rocky Mountain transportation leadership, uh, we agreed to award a 4% inflationary increase uh, due to the increase in cost of everything. Um, and uh, that 4% inflationary increase is uh, just under $24,000. Uh, bringing the entire contract amount to about six hundred and eighteen thousand dollars for the 24-25 fiscal year. Uh, additional wording has also been added about uh, the way invoicing and payment uh, the Rocky Mountain will look like. These conditions have been uh, agreed on by both parties. And I think the most uh, exciting piece of, the, of piece of news is that Rocky Mountain Transportation is now under a new ownership. And uh, we are sorry to say goodbye to Mr. Duff after how many years? 70. 40? <laughs> no, how many? Yeah. How many years? 78 have, years. Have you been working with? You specifically. 48 years. And that was about it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Makes sense. So we just tried to subjectively agree on a time period to keep that driver safe. Okay. But to answer your question, if it was a Mizzou thing or a Polson thing, and they come back um, after that midnight thing, we would be okay. Okay. And would we not violating? Would we also then? Uh, it's not after midnight, but for some reason it's over 10 hours. We have provided another driver. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations on your time. Thank, Thank you. My you wife is most appreciative. <laughs> <laughs> That's a long time. Yeah. Um, can you tell us a little bit about who are the new owners? What can we oh, expect? I can. Yeah. Experience <laughs> school can. transportation. The new owners are sitting over here. Oh. <laughs> you know, me, Duffer, when are you going to retire? When are you going to get out of it? Well, uh, you have to wait until you find the right people. So, this family, uh, it's the Hagnes family, Seth, so he's part of that Hagnes family. And these guys have been in it for three generations. And I've known them for those generations, their dad, for that. And the best known in the valley for their uh, marker of Harlow's transportation. The dad was Harlow Hagnus. He passed along those genes down <laughs> here. And I'm telling you, uh, you can have confidence in these guys. I wouldn't have sold that thing. We had more than one person interested in doing that. You got to wait for the right person. I've known these guys, like I say, for years and years and years. And you can trust them. I'm happy to pass along that to the Agnes family, originally out of North Dakota. Libby, <laughs> you know, we're in Calspell and there's a part of those flagship, but I tell you what, I have such confidence in these guys. They're, they're so smart, they're so good. And they take this just as personally as I do, as carrying forward the uh, prideful transportation of white for school children. Mm -hmm. So that's these guys here. And Seth Soli, the son-in-law, whose wife is a teacher. <laughs> and, uh, but he really knows the importance of getting these kiddos to school. Why not? <laughs> Safe <laughs> enough time. Yes. And comfortable with snow and the kind of weather we have. And now Miss Brooke yeah. even knows how to do Kurtz from a great Jumped in with both feet. Yeah. yeah. He's the Agnes family. Uh, Jason's not here. Uh, and Jason's a part of that family. And um, anyway, that's these guys right here. Uh, this is Jeremy as well. Oh, pardon? Jeremy? Yeah, yeah, Jeremy's here. Yeah. Jason went flying around the country someplace. <laughs> yeah. But uh, honestly, I mean, you guys can have faith in these guys and pride for it. And it's even going to get better. I have so many stories to tell. <laughs> the time of Moly Mow Down. And, you know, I'm a teenager driving a school bus up the hill on a Saturday, and Moly Mow Down is sitting beside me. As a teenager, so we've been doing it for a long time. Yeah. Anyway, any questions? I appreciate uh, you guys coming. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. For the thank you. Welcome. Yeah, yeah we're, here. we're very excited. I live here in Whitefish. Um, my wife is a third grade teacher out at Olney. Um, so I got two young kids, a seven-year-old son named Harlow after great-grandpa, <laughs> and then a four-year-old daughter named Huntley, so they will be coming up through the school system. So very, very excited to take on this opportunity. That's great. Thank you. Congrats to all. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. This is great. Yes. Very exciting. Thank it you is great. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Happy retirement. Oh, I'm going to stay in Haskell for a while. Okay. <laughs> He's going to teach how to use the computer so it's my turn. He's going to to the AI. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are good. So you take the sense of this guy is sharper. <laughs> <laughs> are there any other clarifying questions? Uh, is there any other? Is there any other public comment? Well, I do want to thank you guys. I do want to thank you guys for all the years you've spent with us at Rocky Mountain. We take great pride in that. Uh, take great pride in the Whitefish School System. And I attribute that, you guys on the board, for a large part to the Whitefish School leadership. Principals. Principals. Mm -hmm. Transportation directors. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and so good. Superintendents from Molly to Dave, and be proud of all these people. 
uh, whitefish can be proud of this. And that traditionally we carry on and get better. Let's see you guys. Happy soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have a quick question, actually, and then I apologize if this was already known by everybody in the room. Can you <laughs> <laughs> mind coming up to the podium just so we can hear you? We oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> and then now I'm going to feel extra dumb. <laughs> 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 it's for the people who are on it. Sure, sure. It's I was just that. curious for both Rocky Mountain and Harlow's, is it? Is um, the Whitefish School District your primary? Um, base that no. you serve. I don't think is... we can have you ask questions. It's just public comment. Like it's sorry. I know. I know. I apologize. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. It's okay. I'll follow up afterwards. But you yeah. can comment. Yeah. But you can definitely pay attention back. I don't. I don't. Dale deserves a whole expose. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> I have no formal comments. Okay. Um, Dale, I think yeah. that we, you know, I wish I, I should have been more prepared because I think the district also owes you a huge thank you. Yes. And um, we should have had a, I don't know, a big send off for you. You've done a lot in your family and, you know, and always, I, I, obviously these guys are going to take the torch and take it strong and, and proud, but I think it'll always be Jeff's buses to me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a, a hard transition for both of us. Senior high school class with me. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. That's how well we know one another. Yeah, that's, that's exactly that's right. There's... Your hubby drove for us for okay. all those exciting years, like the fire and the school bus. Yeah, yeah. there's yeah. a lot of history with the, the bus. So, anyways, thank you so much. And yes. uh, welcome. We look forward to uh, yes. 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 many foggy mornings ahead. It's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not for me. <laughs> 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 Scott Labors and you know community family businesses and all those great wonderful things and so thanks for continuing your guys's legacy and your family's yeah. passion and yeah. I do feel so lucky that you're bringing all of that expertise like you said it has to be the right fit and just hopefully a seamless transition so thank you guys yeah. and, and I should say too you know one of the objectives is just not to get children to school safely because statistically the bus industry proves itself it's the safest way to possibly get it child of school, safer than a passenger car. But it's also, uh, from our point of view and these guys' point of view, that the interior atmosphere on that bus is a healthy, uh, a comforting uh, environment uh, to promote that. And these guys will do that. Uh, yes, yeah, a healthy, comforting, happy environment on those school buses so parents can have confidence that those children on those school buses are safe not only from accident but safe from harassment and teasing mm -hmm. these guys are good thank you we want that in this district thank you anything else ready for a motion yeah i'll move we approve as presented i'll second that moved by katie second by shannon all in favor aye I'll go to that one. <laughs> <laughs> everybody, including Rainey and Dale by proxy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Randy, even the history, this guy here drove bus for beach transportation in his first life. On the rooftop, right? Yeah. Fire, fire, fire. fire. We need drivers. We need a CEO. <laughs> I guess I can drive in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> He's up anyway. Yeah, I get a call from him at five fifteen in the morning. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm just out here driving around. <laughs> well, he got a new car, so now he's really going to be going oh. further. Than he's going to be going. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks for being here. Really looking forward to yeah, so nice you. you guys. Yeah. Welcome. Oh, thank you. All right, we are going to move on to co greater data privacy agreement with Jacob. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank so really, I, I'm just up here if you guys have any questions about Co Greater Magic School or the, the photo video plus data privacy agreements. Um, the privacy agreements, we started uh, bringing these to you um, 
I think the last, well, it's been a couple, a couple board meetings, but um, whenever we have a new data privacy agreement that someone in the state does not already have one that we can piggyback off of, uh, we need you to uh, approve it. And if you have any questions about any of those programs, I would be glad to answer them for you. What is ProGrader, you say? Yes. <laughs> we, 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 video. Yeah, that's sure. what I so, so, We have to, we have to, um, because they're all, yeah, because they're separate. all individual items. Sure. Can, I mean, and I think because they're all the same agreement, essentially, right? Mm -hmm. So you can mm -hmm. kind of we try to talk about them all okay. generally together. Sure. You'll have to go through and vote on them all separately. That works. Is that good with everybody? Does that work? I will tell you no. Get them much <laughs> together in the conversation. Sure. Okay. So CoGrader is uh, an AI program that the high school English department is interested in piloting. Uh, and it, it really just is um, intended to reduce, drastically reduce the amount of time it takes to grade uh, English assignments. Um, so it, it'll be kind of that first hit at the, the paper where it's going to go through and it's going to highlight, you know, all these different things it finds on it. And then it'll go on to the teacher for the teacher to look at it. Um, so it just is meant to save them a lot of time. Um, so it's kind of that first read of the paper and then giving the, the teacher the highlights of where it thinks maybe there's some issues with the paper or, um, you know, some feedback. Um, and then that feedback, the teacher can approve it and then go right back to the student right away. Um, so co-grader says that it's about an 80% um, turn or, or reduction in time of turnaround uh, on average for, for teachers, about how fast they can get feedback back to the student. So um, they're wanting to try it out. They've looked at it. Um, they're, they're really excited in trying it. Uh, so that's what co-creator is. So is it just available to English or can social studies use it too? Or? So right now it is just the English department that is um, funding it, I guess. Uh, so it is just their staff that have access to it. Yes. So is it could expand if if they like it and other people see it too. So is one of the features that it can red flag if it feels so it's plagiarism or you know just like yes, not just grammar. Correct. Yeah, it's looking for plagiarism. It's it's looking for a, a variety of different things. Um, I think it, it talks about trying to detect AI, and there's there's a few different programs that try to detect AI generation, um, but that's a really hit or miss um, goalpost as far as if it actually works right now. So, yeah. Magic school. Sure. So Magic School is the one we talked about just a little bit uh, ago. So that is the, the student and staff uh, kind of all-encompassing AI program that has a ton of different tools in it. Um, it's the one that I'm super excited about and staff are really excited about using. Um, so uh, any other questions about it or? Mm -hmm. Photo, video. Mm -hmm. Photo Video Plus is... Um, Story. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, so they are going to be doing some of our student photos. Okay. Not not all of them, oh. uh, but some of them. So, and since the student photos will be housed online along with student data, um, we needed to get a student data privacy agreement with them as well. Oh, so. I thought really. I thought we were. We all thought we were making a joke. Oh no, <laughs> no. <laughs> it is the Kalispell company. Yeah. All seven of us. With Swan Lake so we're still using Swan Lake for some of our photos, um, but we're also trying out uh, this company for uh, some others. So oh. this, this okay. company will serve um, K-8 students. Swan Lake will serve 9 through 12. Interesting. Okay. Cool. Um, are there any clarifying questions for Jacob on D, E, or F? Yeah, sure. How does it work? Like, if I don't know, randomly in the middle of the year, like Josh's English teachers are like, we want that. How does that work? Can you? Talk? <laughs> well, it, it's kind of a um, well. If it's a program that we've already, is it? If it's a program we've already approved for some other parts of the the district, um, then it's really a, a funding issue. Uh, and if there is some place that we can find the funding for kind of expanding that program. Uh, because it is definitely a per teacher license for like co-grader. Um, so we'd have to find funding someplace, either at the school level or department level or, or um, someplace. Uh, so that's that's kind of the question. Um, if so it that be, could be pretty popular, co-grader. It, it could be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> and it might be like, why do they get it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, like you graded papers before. 
I think maybe. Yeah. <laughs> and the English department itself is the one that. <laughs> um, yeah, you, you do have access to magic school um, <laughs> being part of the district. So, uh, so you, yeah. So you, you can sign into magic school AI with your school uh, email address and you'll have full access. Yeah. I would love yeah. To know that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I don't understand. Like, yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, so that's a funding issue. Okay. Uh, if it's a brand new program, then of course we go through a variety of, of kind of uh, vetting the program first before we, we, you know, we, just say yes, go for it. So, uh, you know, the student data privacy is really where it starts, you know, at the very beginning. If, if they're not willing to sign some type of student data privacy agreement, we just simply can't move forward with it uh, if it does store any type of, of student data. Um, so after that, it's really looking at uh, just uh, if it is appropriate use, you know, if it's, it's something that we do think is going to have uh, a good impact for our, our staff and students. Uh, we look, you know, at other districts to see if they're using it, um, you know, for, you know, if we can in Valley or in the state, and then we just kind of broaden it out more and more if we need to. Uh, so we kind of look at that, and then we usually try a pilot program uh, to demo it. And that's that's kind of where we're at now with CoGrader is uh, just that that smaller um, group is, is going to pilot and see if it uh, does work out as well as they think it will. So, yeah. How, how much is the building? Uh, since I'm not the one funding it, I'm not exact. I don't remember off the top of my head how much it is. Um, it's it's not real cheap though, so it, it's it's um, it would be hard to fund that district wide. Um, I don't. Yeah, I, I don't. There's not overlap between the magic school and yeah. greater. Once you get into, them, especially right. magic schools like mm -hmm. progressing, it'll be interesting to see. Mm -hmm. Right. Does it fly from that out there? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. 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 But it could be that, like, yeah, depending on. I mean, co greater could be so specific that it's only really benefiting one particular classroom that it might not be beneficial for everybody based on the price. I mean, I could just see like it could be super mm -hmm. niche. Yeah, I don't know. Who um, just hope it doesn't need to like be a we, we have a variety of programs that are used just at department level or at school level. Um, so there's there's a variety of different groups that use just individual programs to fit kind of their, uh, their own needs. Um, so usually, I mean, we haven't run into that where people have been upset because so-and-so has this program versus the other. Because usually if they've got something, then this other group has a different program they're using. So um, we, we definitely try and help out, um, anybody that has a need, uh, you know, we'll, we'll definitely try and work with them to find something that, that fits that, uh, that need. But, um, so far we haven't had issues with people worried about specific programs that they do or don't have. Perfect. No, I said it though. So, <laughs> uh, public comment. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. please. It's a public comment time. No, there were no other clarifying yeah. questions, were there? Oh, it was just a... We're just doing, we're doing, um, we are doing clarifying questions for all three. Oh, we can't do that? Okay. Oh, we can't like public comment on one item. Oh, okay. So we're oh, doing great. public comment on co-grader. Yes. You're yeah. ready for public comment. Okay, then go for well, it. Just a comment. We've been in this situation before of being a, a group having something. And I think back to Chromebooks. When we first got Chromebooks, there was very few... You might remember when Chromebooks first came in. There's very few Chrome carts. Oh, right? We started in like fifth grade and sixth grade with one classroom. Mm -hmm. Then people are like, oh, I kind of like that. And then it grew to where everybody now has like a Chromebook. So we're, we've are we been in this situation. Thanks, thank you, John. Mm -hmm. um, all right, uh, um, so are you like, plugging a rubric into that prompt? and saying grade towards this, because I know it's like the AP classes is really specific as to what they're looking for. So is it working for just a generic English class or can you plug it in for the rubrics? Yeah, you can put your own rubrics in, uh, you can put uh, standards in, uh, you can put a variety of things into it until it's a grade off of that. Um, and and I haven't dug into it in a, a ton of detail, but yes, you can very get very specific on what it's grading towards. So okay. yeah, and you can choose the, the grading level and, and all kinds of stuff, so. I do think it would be, that's a really good point. Thank you, Maria. An interesting thing because you think about how if you, whatever it could be, at the bottom sometimes it says this program was modified with the system of the data. Like it would be interesting and fair from a student perspective if there was an appeal, perhaps or something kind of conversation to have. If whether it's magic school or co grader, if there wasn't a way for it to be like stamped or indicated somehow, like this project was 
grading assisted using da, da, da. I mean, I'm just curious if that would be a fair, I don't know how often those conversations happen, but it would be just kind of interesting. Like, what are you saying? Like, well, they, like, so the student was, was co-graded by, not, no, like, used um, technology assisted grading. So that the student knows it was technology. Oh, yeah, that is. Is. just like how you reference. I don't know, just a thought. Yeah, maybe I'm hypothetically going down a rabbit hole, but it just seems like that could be a a thought. I don't know. Yes. Yeah. yeah. We're oh. way too wide. We're talking about a data in the region. Is this so? We need to. Oh. We, the, the, the questions are not about the data, data in the region. That's what. I'm oh, okay. Concerned. I guess it's better if we wanted to go down the path. If we, if, we had a, if we had a different item presented that was about what co does. Oh, true. Okay. Thank you, Jen. Sorry. <laughs> right. Weird. The privacy agreement is the order. Okay. Sorry. No, you're right. Thanks, Shannon. I was like, oh, it's an interesting point. Yeah. Um, okay. So then, uh, so we've had discussion, we've had public comment. Back to the board for further discussion or a motion. I make a motion. We accept the agreement with the co grader data privacy area as presented. I'll second. Moved by Shannon, seconded by Jerry. All in favor? Aye. That is everybody. Thank you, Jacob. Sure. Uh, Magic School Privacy Agreement. Are there any clarifying questions on this? Before? We have the highlight above. I have just one clarifying question. How much do you, the, none of these, there was anything available in the Montana uh, Privacy Alliance, Student Privacy Alliance? Correct. Nothing, nothing online. Yeah. Is that surprising? No, not really. Okay. Uh, these are niche and not the thing that. The, the good news is, just so you guys know, that means that now if Missoula adopts this, they can return. Right. Yeah. It's, so just uh, the the Montana Student Data Privacy Agreement that we use, it has an Exhibit A on the end. And if the vendor signs that, then that does allow, yes, any other district in the state to piggyback off of it. So the vendor has a choice to sign it or not sign it. Uh, and yeah, and, and Magic School is, is signing that Exhibit A. So yes, other districts in the state could use it. So it saves them a lot of hassle, saves Magic School and other districts uh, a lot of work. So, so basically you did the labor for all the other mm -hmm. districts. Yes, right. yeah. But if... Magic School Bus doesn't sign it, then we have no agreement. That's sure, they, and they've already signed their portion of it, which is why we're bringing it to okay. you now. So, right. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Um, any public comment on Magic School? Back to the board for clarification, or I mean, motion or further discussion. I move we accept the data privacy agreement for Magic School. Second that. Moved by Jerry, seconded by Shannon. Are you good? Good one. Oh, are you there, Rainy? Yes. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's everybody. Sure if I was coming through or not. <laughs> so you, thank you. And photo, video, plus data privacy agreement. Any clarifying comment or questions? Interesting that we're changing things up. Any uh, public comment? Back to the board for any further conversation or motion? I'm going to move as presented. Moved by Katie, seconded by Elizabeth. All in favor? Aye. That is everybody. Thank you. If I could, I would love to have the discussion that we started here. Yes. Okay. So maybe we could have that. I think those are I think very valid questions, and I'm not opposed to being there. Yeah. I would love to have a presentation for I hate to talk about technology. I can't. Yeah. So, so. <laughs> I, I'd be glad to. Yeah, yeah, I was just thinking, could we make that a work session or what? Or just be, even a, yeah. you could come and present. Present. Um, even after we've yeah. had some time with it. Sure. Yeah, yeah. 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 topic. Yeah, because I was even just thinking. Yeah. 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 yeah, I think having a student teacher perspective along. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. I think yeah. it sure. would be yeah. really interesting because yeah. I was even thinking, what I was thinking was funding. I think this is going to be going yeah. to Yeah, these are the kind of things that we need to do. So I think it almost becomes a work session because I think there's a lot to Versus to explore. It's to explore versus, I mean, I think we might need other time. Ethics. A lot. Ethics. Yeah. Well, Jared, it will also come up when we go over the handbook. Um, yeah, what provisions do we need to put in place for the AI? Yeah. The and and no. the no, that's that's that 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 no. Oh, I thought we were talking about the student handbook. No, that's right. I didn't realize oh. that. I would be curious if we did talk about AI to talk about what that student agreement. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll throw out, of course, I am not an expert. Uh, you know, I'm learning it along with everybody else, but I, I have fun doing it. So I'm I'm definitely yeah, you know, for a conversation. So um, no, I think it's and I just think it's also something that we need to get continually educated on. Mm -hmm. you know, sure. I would say that's yeah, so we're not left behind. So we're not left behind. Yes. As, as a district or as a board, you know, we need to be aware of what we're expecting of our staff and students and Still waiting to move into virtual reality. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, thanks. <laughs> 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 yeah. Usually you're just in square. Is he really even in the building? I don't know. I am. Yep. I'm in my office if I'm up there. So. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to the football lease contract with the Glacier Clint. Yeah, this is South Lease Agreement that you've seen before. Um, really, nothing has changed on this agreement, including the price. All the other uh, components have stayed the same. This has been reviewed by the Glacier Twins Board, I believe. Um, and it's been presented to you for your vote this evening. It's the sub lease agreement with the Glacier Twins to lease the board park. Um, Again, no other changes. This has been reviewed. The previous one that was the environmental council before. Um, and again, the cost is the same as well. Any questions? Are there any questions today? Do you remember, do you know if exactly or off the top of your head what the twins lease that they held from the city for? Is it $25 a year? $25. I don't think. $25 a year, then they lease the desk for $6,000. Well, I do believe it's a dollar. I think it's a dollar. I'm, yeah, I'm not sure. Yes. Oh, all right, thank you. Any public comment? Uh, back to the board for further discussion. Well, I would like to say that this just is one of the reasons why we need to get that bond back. <laughs> <laughs> it is right here in front of us. Uh, because the lease agreement with all of these provisions and the cost and the challenges that go along with it and the dollar or $25 a year that they lease it for rent it from the city from and then are able to put these restrictions on the school district are pretty limiting. So that's my point of discussion. Your motion. Make a motion that we accept the agreement as it is. I'll second. Moved by Shannon, seconded by Katie. All in favor? Aye. That's everybody. Thank you. Uh, Logan Health Fitness Service Agreement, Dave. Yeah, so the um, Logan Health provides uh, us with someone who does their training for our athletics. So that's it's agreement where they provide that service to us. The one thing that we're uh, considering tonight is the uh, amendment to that agreement. So it's amendment number one. They brought this forward to me uh, for consideration of amending the contract. And really what it does, if you can see it, just exhibit A, and it really is providing more detail to what that position will be. The other contract is very broad in terms of what it provides in terms of the health care service. And then this is more detailed about how they provide those services. So, so, um, so again, this contract can review and reviewed by their legal counsel as well. And it's always recommended. Any questions? Um, so, the one question I have is do we get uh, I mean, does the local Whitefish Hospital provide these people, or do they come elsewhere? Uh, it's through Logan Health, so I don't know where that. They're Logan is. Health employees. They're Logan Health employees in general. Yeah. So it could be from either hospital. Yes. <laughs> Not in my mind. I'm I think sorry. It's I lived here too long. Yeah. I know that they're owned by the same. I actually have the same one. 
before we were. No. Good question. Questions about the agreements, the service they provide free of charge to our customers. I think it's helpful having it spelled out for folks. So yeah, I appreciate that yeah. all parties agree to it. Um, Darcy, can you hear me? When... Yeah, we can, Rainy. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so I just had a question <laughs> similar to Jerry's. Uh, if you look at that exhibit A, they talk in number, hmm, wait a second. I just had it. Oh, yeah. Number three coordinate an injured athlete's follow up treatment with their, their selected health care. I guess I'd like to know that are, is there, meaning the student's selected health care provider? and or rehab specialists like physical therapist, or does Logan say that they have the right to send them to... Now, certainly all the orthopedists in town in the Valley are owned by Logan, but not all the physical therapists are. So... It's you know, a It's a choice. That's just, they're specifically highlighting that they have the freedom of choice, yeah. They who, the student or the facility? Yeah. Yep, and that's why it's the trainer's duty to communicate with whoever the student selects. So the trainer can't say if they're out of mind, I'm not going to share my notes versus right. whoever the student chooses. Yeah. Yeah, I just, I think it would be worth clarifying that. Just from working with Logan Health <laughs> as a provider. Um, because they have a little bit of a two-tiered system as far as if a provider refers one of their patients to Logan Health for, uh, you know, like um, a follow-up appointment or something. And if that provider's practice doesn't, isn't a Logan practice, the patient has heard on numbers of occasions that they're low priority for that referral, which is why I think it needs to be more specific and say with the student's selected healthcare provider and or rehab specialist. But I mean, it is a little bit picky, but on the other hand, it's kind of restricted trade if they decide that their refers to the, cause isn't it, doesn't it sound like Logan is providing somebody at all the activities? That's my clarifying question related would be, is it possible to just say, Coordinated athletes follow up treatment with the students selected health care providers. Right. Is that possible to me? I can propose that. Instead of there, yeah. the students. Mm -hmm. That's my only concern because it do doesn't it earlier. I think, if I could just clarify to you, like I think if you read through it, it's all fairly general because like number eight says similarly, effectively communicate with physicians, school coaching staff, like you could say, effectively communicate with the students' physicians. So you know what I mean? Or it could just get kind of confusing. But maybe well, I was just I know I totally had... point is raining. I don't have a problem with it. I'm just saying that I think it's just in no. general. Well, that was why I yeah. asked my question because I was asking whether or not our kids would have to be sent to Kalispell for services, or could they get services here? Right. Uh, so this, since it's just on the field, this, yeah, this, the field, this is the service it, that provided but, on site. Yeah. Well, but um, rehab wouldn't be on site. But they, yeah, but the student then gets to choose that. This is like so if they're playing a football game and their ankle gets popped out, and right. they have the trainer on the field. Right. Logan Health has a whole. Program. program. Yeah, I know that. And that's the trainer that they have out there. And that's what this is referring to. Not anything. Right. And the trainers, that. each, again, we could have it. This is about this document, but if you want to know the process, it's probably a good topic of conversation to have. Like the athletic director come in and explain the process. Um, but it, it's definitely like you have a trainer on field and the trainer on field refers you to, oh, you should go to the ER, you should go to urgent care, you should, you know what I mean? It's not as though they say where. But it's cool. not because I where did I see I, I thought it said that Logan was providing somebody to be on the field. They are all these trainers are free to us and Logan pays for them. Right. So because in the olden days, I think the family docs you to rotate through doing this. That's what I was gonna 
access, right? right. Who, yeah. who provides them? Who are yeah. they, or employees of Logan Health? But are right. they, I guess, my, are they physical therapists? Are they uh, physicians? I, I guess that was good. They're trainers. I think they're trainers. The trainers are physical therapists. My friend's a physical therapist, but she's one of the trainers. She's like yeah. a trainer for the range rider, but she's a right. trained so physical be... therapist. Right. So, right. Uh, but they're like trained for athletic injuries, like athletic trainers. They've been, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's they can evaluate, but not necessarily treat. I mean, you know, if there's a fracture, they wouldn't set it or whatever. Yeah. Or, you know, the closed head injury, they'd need to be sent. They do like the on site concussion screens, and that's why they talk about return to play, like that specific language. It's like, you know, you get a header and they decide if they stay on side. And then, like you said, if, like you just said, Randy, if they look like they have a fracture, do you refer them or do you let them go back into the championship game? <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. So it could be as a neurologist. I don't, I think it's ATs. <laughs> My understanding is, it, but that is, uh, well, is it in the rest of the contract? <laughs> well, it says in accordance with NATA, MHSA, and school guidelines. I bet if Carrie was here, he could tell us. Or the FAA. Because that's what uh, NATA is National Athletic Training Association, right? So that's athletic trainers, which is not a doctor and not a PT, an athletic trainer. That this is their whole job is they do yep at at Logan mm -hmm. Health. Mm -hmm. That's our school Yeah, thanks for yeah. I was gonna say this they is must the have. agreement for our schools. Yeah, for both schools. Okay. Um, but we could certainly I, try more. I don't know if I can make a suggestion. I, I yeah. believe the intent of it, if I read this is that all of you is treatment is with their selected health care provider. I think they're indicating that. Um, I can follow up with them and have a conversation um, regarding that and make sure that that's understood. Or you could try to uh, modify some language in here. So if we do modify some language, I think we can get into back to them for consideration and then back to us at the end. For Right. And actually on page two, it does say no referral requirement that they're not required. The school student athletes or students, athletes, parents are not required to use the service providers, providers or services like PT for necessary follow up. But then I just don't think it idea in an ideal world, you'd clarify that in the exhibit A. But well, I this would be my suggestion because I think we want to have this in place before practice, before, before, practice, before games start going. So, and they've already started practice. I think what I would suggest is that we, what I would like to see is that we get this approved. And then if we need to go back and get that language reworked, because I can imagine they're busy at the hospital. This isn't going to be their top priority. They might feel like they have a pretty solid contract that every other district is probably signed already. <laughs> and I'll come back to not that we shouldn't. I think it's a funny word, but you know we can get this one signed so we have something on contract with a work on that language. And then if we can get that reworked, even if it's in November or something, then we can bring it back to have it in a better. State. They don't go to practices; they just go to games, right? Correct, but we would have our first game within the next, before our next board meeting. Yeah. Oh. Uh, before the 20th. Oh, the 21st. Oh, they are the practices there, as you say there. Especially yeah. when it's heat, like they're the ones yeah. who help with the heat stroke and all. Like they do. So I think it's important to have one of these on file. Yeah. Um, because I think the liability of not having this on file would is greater than the word there in number three, but I think we could get this on file and work on that word mm -hmm. wording for the future. Right. Well, and it's already signed, it looks like, for the agreement. It was just the exhibit A. Yeah, the agreement's already signed. That's right. Fine. So this is but just exhibit A. Is that part of the the, it's, it's the, exhibit exhibit a. the amendment that needs to be signed? Yeah, that's all we're considering. So. Yeah. I think it's also just note to self, um, because I feel like Eric usually comes in the fall and chats with us. 
Mm. It was a presentation about just keeping in our head, like, oh, let's ask clarifying questions about what this looks like in practice. Yeah. Doesn't Eric usually come in the morning? Yeah, he's going to fall. He doesn't fall. Yeah, now he's going to be a good opportunity for us all to get educated. <laughs> I think it's a really valid point, Randy. Uh huh. Okay. I like the clarifying words. Yeah. yeah. Because it is vague. Yeah. Um, but I don't want to not have any, I don't want to not have something. Right. I think it's, you know, that you say that it's signed, but you would like them to. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's a good point. So it's not like they can that's show true. up. Anyway. That is true. Yeah. We're still under that other one. The amendment is that they're clarifying. So we're just further clarifying. Clarifying. Their clarification. <laughs> yeah, clarifying. They're clarifying. What we want is for somebody to misinterpret this and right. refer them only to their, their people. Right. Right. That's true. Which wouldn't be that crazy. Right. You know? No, no. Right. I don't have it. Yeah. So, um, how long is this one? The one that's signed. The one that's signed. Sign. No, the one that's signed. Sign. Yeah. Oh, that one. That was last year. But it signed. Yeah, but it must have a. Must have a date. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I don't know. I don't see a term. Yeah, I don't see a term on this. Yeah. So that signed a year ago. And it's for one year, so it needs to be signed again. Did you say where it says it's for one year, Rainy? We can't well, find it. Oh, term. It's yeah, this term shall be for term one year. Terminations on page four. Yeah. Page four C. Oh, then so we, we, don't, we don't have an agreement on at all. Right. Yeah. Oh, so, well, good thing we have to cover uh, Yeah, that very much so. Uh, it was presented to me as the only thing that we're doing. Mm -hmm. and not renewing it. Not renewing it. <laughs> We might need to, well, we need to add this to our special yes, no, we, need, we use automatically yeah. successive one year terms unless one notifies the other. There's lots of questions. Yeah. Yeah, we just need to have a, unless we have this party notifies the other party writing 30 days prior that, oh, no, that's not, not right now. No, it, it says it's going to automatically renew. It's kind of like your automatically subscriptions. Oh, it will renew. It does. Say. Oh, okay. So it's automatically renewed. Yeah, it okay. does. Okay. So it's not automatic. So. But it seems reasonable to ask them to. Yeah. 100%. Okay. okay. So Let's, do you want to table this then? Or what What would be Shannon? Matt, the proper all? thing would be to um, uh, approve it with, uh, with amendments. Okay. And then go back. Then it has to go back to their board. And if they refuse, then it, it just becomes a ball of bean. But um, if, you, if they if they approve it, my understanding would be that, that our approval with that language change, if they approve it, we don't have to see it. Wait, okay, perfect. Okay. Awesome. Um, is there any public comment? Are we done with discussion? Or I mean, clarifying discussion? Um, any public comment? Thank you all. For your patience on that. Uh, back to the board for any more discussion or a motion. So, is that the only there so in exhibit A number three? If we do say with the amendment, is that the there or is there yeah. anything else? I think that was there. That's cool. We want right. students instead of there. The, the, the students. With the students, students, students right. Oh, okay. So, we put that in there. Replace there Replace with the. Yeah, I got it. Students. I'll do that and then or I can do that if that's what you want. Yeah, so the only time is the You know, that becomes an issue because if they go, no, we don't want that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so do we have to um, approve so amendment? Approve the amendment. amendment. So do we have yes. to first make a motion to amend? Yes. And then make the motion to no, or no, I approve it in the and then we try to be specific for the minutes. Oh, it's simple. You said to it. I'd like to. Uh, I'd like to move that we approve this with the amended language. 
in number three, replacing there with the student. I'll second that. Move by your motion. That was my motion. Great. Well stated. <laughs> Move by Shannon, seconded by Katie, complimented by Quincy. All in favor? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody <laughs> should. We're all learning. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, that was good catch, Rainy. Yeah. Thank, yeah. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. And also good, I think, thoughts for having Eric explain some things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yes. Yeah. Does that all work? Educate us. Man, we're really opening our eyes wide. So many things. Mm -hmm. You can tell we've had a lot. We forgot a lot of things over the summer, too. The <laughs> summer slide is real. It's a real variety. <laughs> summer slide. All right. That was exciting. Graduate profile update. You can get that wording. Oh, yeah. Lucy, are you good? Can mm -hmm. we move on? All right. Can we move on? Thank you. Okay. Sorry. Dave. Okay, so um, I, this is the uh, agenda item where we really put it on here so that we could just uh, have a brief conversation uh, to indicate that we will be aging this graduate profile discussion this year. It's part of our discussion last year in our strategic planning process. Uh, we asked questions for feedback on some of our, our needs assessment related to it. We did receive some feedback regarding the graduate profile. But we didn't make any adjustments to it. Um, we knew that we had a little bit more time to do that. And we have until March to do that this year. So um, I think it's a, a great um, topic for us to engage in regarding what do we expect of our students. School district. This is our current graduate profile. Um, and you can see um, um, it indicates uh, students will learn to master academic content or collaborative and critically solve complex problems, effectively engage in self directed learning and develop a growth mindset. And I remember being part of those discussions developing this uh, graduate profile. But I'm looking forward to the opportunity to do this again this year as we look at this and make some updates or changes to this graduate profile as we look into our schools for the future. Um, uh, I've reached out to a few folks and, and looking into someone who might help facilitate those discussions with us, because I think it would be helpful at the next to facilitate this process, uh, just to help facilitate some discussions and communication sessions as well. Um, and I would, I'm hoping that it's, it's part of our first K-12 Connect discussion getting people from the agents. But wanted to bring it to your attention that it's a, if we look at our year, there's a lot of, there's some big rocks. Think of Stephen Steve Covey, right? What are the big rocks that we're, we're looking at? Um, and this is one of, this is one of those big items that we uh, should be focusing on this year, um, as well as a lot of other things, expansion, Course, we're all about student growth. This is a big topic for us. Any questions? I think that just as it relates to like the strategic plan we did last year, um, that had a lot of specific language, etc. That OPI, um, I don't know, in their document that had specific things they were looking for. Is that somewhere then? Excuse me. Is this similar as far as the direction that OPI is giving or looking for? Like, is this something that has to be custom? Yeah. Yes, thank you. Has to be custom. Like, it has to meet OPI's requirements. Therefore, we have oh. to be really careful how we word everything. No, I think there's more flexibility yeah. in this. Yeah, right. I okay. think. And there's, you still see um, mm -hmm. profiles of a learner, graduate profiles used. I mean, there's all kinds of different languages. Okay. Those are all acceptable. Oh. But I think um, and I think what they do want is more than what we do here. And I think that's okay. They want a little bit more depth to it. For instance, where it says master active content. What do we mean by that? A little bit more detail to it. Okay, that's fine. So there is some kind of list we're going off of. There is there is a little bit of looking for this. Yeah. Primarily, this is being done. Actually, it's a very um, common thing throughout the country. So, yeah. there's a lot of examples out there. A lot of people are engaged in this. I'm excited about it. I think it's a really good activity to be engaged in. 
one of my favorite things to do is to go to graduation. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. it's just it, well, it's just amazing to watch kids walk across that. Yeah. Yeah. Just graduate. Capturing that. What do we want? So we should walk across the stage. What do we want them to achieve before they walk across the stage? I think that's a great conversation. I think so Oh, I think it'd be interesting too in this because I feel like sometimes we'll, like we lose track of what happens after they leave the stage. You know, like yeah. how did it work? Did we do a good job for yeah. you? And yeah. I think bringing graduates back yeah. to discuss like their, you know, how did we do would be a huge. And I I know we used to we did that one time where we had graduates come back, but I think to if we're looking at this to do that again and to have them come in and talk about how it did translate after they left here. Oh, like that that like, yeah. Oh, totally. Right. Yeah. So I think that point. would be a good way to tie that in. Great song. Well, is this then in the course of their K through 12, what they're working on or when they graduate, they will have demonstrated that they have mastered academic content and can work collaboratively and think critically and communicate effectively. I mean, is this the process or is this the end goal? A little bit of both, I think. Uh, but I think you're right. This one's a little bit more focused on what do we expect when they graduate. Mm -hmm. uh, but you, there, like I said, some people call them learning profiles, and so you can get a little bit more into the process if you want. But I think. Um, more common approach is more of a graduate profile, what you're looking for, what you to see as they cross the stage. Right. What they have shown you they can do. Yeah. Yeah. And what we would like them to do in, in order to be successful academically in college and career. Right. Well, the idea of a 12 next year, I think a really important part of this is going to be getting feedback, right, from all kinds of community members, like alumni, also employers, employers, like what are they looking yeah. for? And, right. Yeah, what do they see? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It'd be nice to think that there was a way to connect with colleges too. So mm -hmm. yeah. What do you want to see your freshmen? Like, as well as employers like balance that. In. Right. So will this be more of a, a work session throughout the year? Um, the there will at least be one, at least K-12 Connect work session. We'll probably have another work session where we discuss it a little bit. But yeah, um, ultimately, we'll, be, we'll decide on it in a regular board meeting. Is there a time? Uh -huh. like there, uh, yeah. there is March is the, the deadline, but on my board, I got December as a kind of a target. <laughs> so, <Got> uh, <laughs> Uh, because there's there are a lot of things. Uh, as I talk about the big rocks, we, we had that conversation as an administrative team today. There are a lot of things in our strategic plan, and district action plan, we need to focus on. And this is one. Of them. This one's the first one. I think we have to find in order to do the same thing for the entire school. Graphic designer. See yeah. <laughs> I'll call I'll call Fisher Price. <laughs> Fisher Price on top. I've always Where do you get grass? The current and the current profile little guy. Have you seen him, Jake? Mm -hmm. Oh, he's yeah. looking at it. Oh, that. oh, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah like, it's, uh, We don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater here. I hope oh, Jake can come up with. Them. <laughs> you can make this song through the slides. It's <laughs> I bet AI can come through. I've seen some AI art. You gotta be real careful. Yeah. 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 I don't think AI has mastered art yet. I'm gonna say, totally. be real careful. They might master the graduate. They could. <laughs> don't ask it about the thing. Well, I'm going to say something about the graduate profile. All right, Lucy, final budget. Yay. Uh, thank you, Darcy. Uh, so presented for your consideration is uh, the final version of the 24-25 budget. Uh, 
the uh, total dollar amounts uh, did not change. Uh, the uh, total uh, dollar amount of the uh, combined elementary and high school budget is twenty six million four hundred one thousand nine hundred and twenty eight dollars. Uh, the only change I did make is a result of uh, of the new uh, transportation contract that we talked about a little bit earlier, where um, I originally budgeted for a 2% increase. We then agreed on a 4% increase. Uh, however, I felt confident that I can decrease uh, diesel uh, fuel line item by those same amounts. Uh, so, so is the wash. Uh, so the transportation uh, budgets uh, one one zero and two one zero did not change. Just change those specific items between uh, the private contractor budget and this uh, Any questions? Yeah, where are you getting the people to use it? You know, I just I think with the way the uh, the gas prices are on the market, uh, we'll just see a pretty stable, pretty stable prices or even a decrease possibly. Oh, just play the futures market. I don't like to be. I think I over budgeted a little bit, you know, in the current year just to be uh, conservative. And now I know that um, the numbers should work out. Are there any other clarifying questions for Lucy? Any public comments? Back to the floor for discussion or motion. I just want to say, as always, thank you so much, Lucy, and Santa Lash for being presented this, as well as that intro letter. That's such a nice thing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. So thank you for all your efforts on this. Thank you. And your illustration under the fund structure with the buckets full of dollars just Add a special touch. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Well, yeah, it's coming from that. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Financial and yeah. 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 I move we accept the amended budget yes. as presented. An amended final. Well, the final. Oh, I guess it is somewhat. She, I'm sorry. You're right. She, she did that. I thought you were thinking we had to. Mm -hmm. I apologize. Yeah. Well. She said she changed. You're right. She did. I apologize. No, you're right. I was. Okay, so I maybe it doesn't need to say amended. Maybe it just needs to say final budget. Final budget. Just yes, final budget. budget. Yeah. I just didn't want people to think there was an amendment. Because the dollar amount of the whole budget didn't change. Yeah. Right. And that's right. really what you are uh, uh, approving. Right. You're not approving every single line item on 42 pages. Right. You're just. Yeah. Uh, That'd be a lot to be responsible for. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So approved by Jerry. I second. Seconded by Elizabeth. All in favor? Aye. That is everybody. Thank Good you so much. Thank you. you. A lot of work. It is so much work. 42 pages of pure beauty. Mm. Beauty <laughs> 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 <Yeah. laughs> yeah. numbers. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Um, okay, Dave. Recommendations for hire. Okay. So We've been working hard to fill some of our positions. We have uh, hires for music and also special education and some guest teachers as well. Your consideration. Any clarifying questions for Dave? Public comment? Back to the board for discussion or a motion? Sorry, one quick question. Oh, uh, the one that does not say a FTE, that is a full time. Thank you. I just have to comment that Alvia is coming out of retirement already. Thank you. 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 Thank Perfect. Moved by Quincy, seconded by Katie. All in favor? Aye. That is everybody. 
um, out of district students. So the um, administration recommends approval of the out of district enrollment applications corresponding with the student numbers here. Um, in front of you. So, approval is recommended for those that number of students there. Are there any clarifying questions? Any public comment? Back to the board for further discussion or a motion. I'll move to approve as presented. All second. Moved by Katie, seconded by Elizabeth. All in favor? Aye. Hey, everybody. Thank you. We have an out of district application denial. Okay. So, uh, administration recommends denial of this application due to. Um, because adding this student would exceed the 87% of the accreditation cap as outlined in our strategic plan. So due to the grade level being the whole. Yes. Are we allowed to say publicly which grades are full so that people know, so that they know if they should apply or wait? Uh, yeah, I can say publicly that this um, fourth, at this time, fourth and second grade are full. Okay. Thank you. Can I ask a clarifying question then too yeah. about, so when we do the out of districts that we just approved, they were all lumped and these out of districts that were denied, they're individual. I'm just curious. So, on uh, the, oh. It was a part of the requirement for us to deny an application okay. to provide an opportunity for them. Well, because each one has to go. Okay. Or they can um, have an opportunity for public comment with our denied. In so, this case, you cannot it wouldn't go into executive session because it's not related to anything other than grade level caps. Grade level would be full in that grade level. But for instance, if it, uh, you were making a decision based on behavior of the other component, you would then move into executive discussion or discussion uh, parent would have the right to participate in the discussion. So that brings up a question. Mm -hmm. If young master or mistress P469 decided the parents of that person decided to how would they know which of these three they are? Do they would would we then know that we notify them? So in other words, if they wanted to come in here for public comment, we would tell them that they are correct P469. Correct. And then are you required when you deny people to say the reason why? Um yes, there's a Mm -hmm. We've done that. Yeah, I see. I just wondered if you mm -hmm. that. Yeah. But we've done that separately yeah. prior to us. And I would like to know the question what would happen if um, you said second and fourth are full now, but after school starts, what if they're not? Could they reapply? Correct. They could reapply. Okay. Yeah, I was curious about that. Idea. And do they know that? That they could check the numbers and possibly reapply? Um, I don't know. I'd have to look carefully to see if that's specified. Because sometimes the numbers, I mean, they, it may appear full, but sometimes the numbers change. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, if you can clarify, too, because I remember this conversation this law here. Mm -hmm. So if they are denied because of numbers specifically, do we hold their place on some lit? I remember having no. It's just no. you don't, and so then you, everyone reapplies. Okay. Correct. Thanks, sir. I'm sorry. I know yeah, we went over that. Good question. Don't hold this. I think the assumption would be that they've applied somewhere. Well, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 But yeah, the lot of numbers. That we need to keep a list of how we're situational. Yeah. It could reapply. And and what is the earliest date that they could reapply? Is it the October reporting date or what are we Certain number, I had to look at the prior information, but it's a certain number of days prior to this board meeting. We have a specific date that they could apply. So before our September board meeting? Regular board meeting. They yep. could reapply. Right. Thank you, sir. So that's not fair. Is there any public comment on 
from out of M, out of the shift to an application to out of M. Um, so it's like some two, four, two, six, nine. <laughs> <laughs> the less you track up up here tonight, there's a lot happening. Um, really be in the PLH. I know. It's really weird. 2469. Um, okay. Uh, back to the board for further discussion or motion. Good job for our first time. Yeah. I move that we approve it tonight. I'll second. Moved by Elizabeth, seconded by Jerry. All in favor? Aye. That's everybody. Thank you. Okay, now we're moving on to N, out of district student application denial 24388. Are there any clarify? Oh, sorry. Dave, go ahead. Okay. Might need to say no, I'm sorry, there's no additional information <laughs> here. Administration <laughs> recommends denial of the application due to the grade level being full. Are there any clarifying questions on this number? No. Any public comment? Uh, back to the board. Um, we approve the denial of two and four, three, eight, eight. I'm not so they, I know. <laughs> Thank you. Moved oh, by Katie, well, second. seconded by Quincy. All in favor? Aye. Thank you, everybody. Okay, now on to O, out of district student application denial 24523. Uh, also for um, enrollment at capacity for a grade level. Um, is there any clarifying questions on this one? No, public comment? Yes, I'm not. Okay, back to the board for a motion. Moved by Quincy, seconded by Elizabeth. All in favor? Aye. That is everybody. Thank you very much, everyone, for our first time out of the gate with that situation. That's awkward. It's really it's awkward. awkward. It's just a little different, but we'll get there. Um, okay, sorry. I'm just looking at how this is, but administration recommends denial. She wants to make a recommendation. That's approval of the denial. Or something. It does not recommend approval. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. It's because of, yeah. It's, it is worded weird. It's, it's worded weird. weird. Yeah. That's why I, I hesitated. It's not that we're recommending to deny your right. request, <laughs> which, okay. yeah, we're going to have to work on that for next time. Like, so it might be good. <laughs> yeah, that's not recommended. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, we can Okay. Well, especially it's under the recommended action because that administration recommends denial. That looks like it's absolutely needed. Right? Okay. That's exactly right. Because yeah. the recommended action is administration recommends so denial. So it really could be a rec rec approved. Yeah, it's a tricky. It is tricky. Yeah, yeah. it is tricky. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so I think we just forgot that. Sorry, that's it kind of caught me off guard. I, know, I think we were all struggling with the computer. Yeah, yes. sorry. Um, um, the numbers. The numbers. <laughs> Like really weird. You guys be such big. <laughs> They're big kids. Like, <laughs> I never said, do we have two thousand people? I should have said the special code. I'm sure it's a year. Twenty four would be the year. Oh, Twenty four, then five hundred. But who knows? But okay. obviously, it's not this great. That has nothing to do with it. But yeah, twenty four is the year. I should just say purple. <laughs> purple. <laughs> We're denying for oh <laughs> Bruce. Okay. <laughs> on to trust on to reports. Trustee <laughs> announcement. We have lots of thoughts. Like you used to be on that word when you're Shannon, when are you headed to Seattle? In September. Oh, okay. So, in the exact year. No, I just wasn't sure if it had already happened. It, it, no, it's in September. Okay. And MCL is in October. It's only in Missoula, so I'd love to see if everybody here. Are you gonna go? Last time I was in Missoula, I'm probably gonna go in. Unless I'm unless I'm out of my mind, you're out of town. <laughs> Could be both. Oh. Yeah. Um, but it's at the Missoula Hill Garden, same place it was last time. Um, we did when it was in Missoula last time, we did have every board member down there for at least a short time. Cool. 
it is a great opportunity to, it is. with it being so close. I yeah. yeah, would encourage you. Yeah, but it's a great way to engage and work not only here at some of the presentations, but also meet with other trustees yeah. across, across yes. the state. 1617. It's also an opportunity for trustees for, for you to get there. Yeah. yeah, which is doesn't right. occur very often. So yeah, it's great. time to chat. Something about um what you're hearing and learning about from other groups. I think it's great for chance. Um, I do want you to know that we do um, have reservations already established. So if you do choose to do that and want to participate, let us know. If you do not, we'll, we'll cancel the reservations. It is kind of nice because you could do a day there and a day back. You don't have to commit to the whole. You wouldn't, yeah. Which is a nice way to think about it. Well, but generally, the first day is, I mean, it is pick your opening keynote at that, that many kids, but it's not much else really. Yeah, 17th and 18th before. The meat of it? Well, I think one thing to point out though is that the Calabala office. Oh, yeah, that is a good thing that he, before the, oh, the, yeah. the day of the opening, they do a. Uh, right. Yeah, this is. There's actually two kind of legal. Rundowns. Uh, Calvo Ops does one, and then and so actually does one, which I bet you it's not bad. And we actually talk about what court cases have come across that affect school law. We have an MSL stand for. Let's get a conference on education. All these years, learn. It is a. It is made up of a bunch of different bus. Oh, okay. Most of which are administrative. All the think tanks and yeah. under one umbrella. Um, thank you. Are there any other trustee notes? I just um, was going to say something, but I want to be cautious about stealing Dave Slender, which is um, as a parent who's getting ready for their child to return back to school, I went on to the district website on my phone <laughs> <laughs> and it was functional. <laughs> That's why Jacob yes. Slender wanted to give kudos. <laughs> To I mean, there's so many links. It's so easy. Anyways, thank you all. I know I, I have told so many people. I have seen the new website. <laughs> like, like the school up, and I'm like, it's so exciting. <laughs> I'm really geeking out over it. And we're very appreciative. I cannot tell you the number of times I get stuff in the grocery store or at the game. This is the question that people ask me as a trustee. So thank you. So, sorry if that's anyone's thunder, but I did want to express gratitude. So that's a great thank gratitude. You, yeah. mm -hmm. It is so exciting. It is very exciting. You can find your lunch, can find your lunch thing. Like, I can tell you all my friends. <laughs> Hey. Thank you. Yeah, but the school starts the 28th. I'm sure Dave would go all over all this. And then the thoughts, oh man, things are going to start getting real, real fast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, as far as the board retreat goes next week, on the 21st, we have a pin Five to eight. Five to eight. Five to eight. 445 for a special board. That's <laughs> um, <laughs> So, um, for dinner, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, and this is another thing that made me special for dinner. I thought I would take requests. I thought I'd be nice, but I didn't get weird. Well, oh, she had a mic like so. There you go. Jack O'Brien. That's the name you write on it. That ordered up. Well, you okay. probably find it What's something. Place? I don't really have nothing to say, Dave. What do you have for us? And okay. Or, or sure, right? I think I think we're done. Okay. The biggest news I think we have from our is would be um Quincy's big enough or yes, the yes. website. Yeah, thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, I we, we talked we talk about this in our administrative meeting today today. First of all, our administrative team and our secretaries came back with buildings today, which is exciting to for us, we were hearing her yesterday, but we got our first meeting today. Um, really, people are jumping right into it. And of course, everyone's excited about the year. Parents are, and staff are, and administration, everybody. So we're working hard to get ready for that meeting. Um, we, um, 
we did have a conversation today, one of the celebrations we had and on our agenda, we talk about other celebrations and that was one of them, certainly. Our website is up and running and we're excited about that. I think it provides a lot of information. We're still um, in, a, in a really efficient and good way to navigate it, but I think um, we're still tweaking some things. So you'll see some pieces there that we need to work on a little bit and we're still working on it. Um, but we're, if you see something that needs to be addressed, Feel free to let me know. Um, we did right off the bat change that calendar and made it you know, so you have an event. If you click on the event calendar on your district website, it takes you to the event section. And the event section is quite different. Um, and it's different on the district website compared to the other websites. So if you're going to a high school, it's going to have academics and athletics separated. You click on both of those immediately. But on the district website, it's kind of eventually you'll have an assessment calendar in addition to the regular calendar. And the event calendar on the district website is more focused on like board meetings, work sessions, our K-12 connects, a lot of those district meetings. And then there's a quick uh, link on that district website. If you get on it, a tab that goes right to the school year calendar. I know that was often times mm -hmm. when people would ask questions. Where is Where's the school year calendar? Because it was at the bottom. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so now you don't have to scroll to the bottom. It's right there. There's a tab. If you click on that, it pulls up the school year calendar. So, um, so so, uh, the graphics alone. And the I mean, graphics are advanced for like 50 years. <laughs> <laughs> You know what else is crazy? Like the little tabby thing change. I everything. Yeah, and you can see that the colors uh, actually align specifically with the colors of our district yeah. as well. Other before they didn't quite match. It was a little off. So this is all great news. And if you, what's that? Um, could you? Could you? Could I ask Jacob? You certainly can. Jacob should take a bow. <laughs> I can't. Uh, so first, I, I helped kind of oversee it, but I'm not the one that did all the work. So uh, educational networks, they they worked really hard to to make it look nice. They um, you, we provide them our branding guide. So that's how they were able to get the colors and a lot of the, the icons and everything to look like they should now. Um, so that was nice work that uh, I believe it was students, correct, that did the branding guide. Uh, so anyways, it was nice work they did that's helped out now already with our website too. So just another kind of cool project that's had other reaching uh, assistance. So sorry, go ahead. So, yes. And uh, what's that I keep forgetting? What's that? There's a part of it where you scroll through it and the picture moves. Oh, uh, on the district website, there's the parallax picture. Yes, parallax. where the, the image scrolls at a different speed to the rest of the page. It, it's just kind of a cool touch. Um, the, the schools don't have that in place yet, but that will be coming for them as well. It won't. It doesn't necessarily work on a phone. That is a, a computer uh, item, but it's, yeah, it's a cool, cool look. So, yeah. Just some neat touches like that, but also just the navigation seems a lot easier. I think it's easy to find things. So I appreciate all your work on that. Sure. A, a big focus is definitely the branding side of things and, and kind of advertising our district. So you'll see uh, one of the things that we're working on is the, the at a glance sections on each of them. Um, you know, so that's still a work in progress, but it's going to be nice because it's going to show uh, some of the highlights for each of our schools and for the district. Uh, and on the high school website, um, also we're uh, working on that scrolling banner at the bottom. That's kind of cool. It shows where school or where uh, students are attending college after the fact. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. So uh, so that's going to be updated with uh, some more accurate information. But that's that's kind of a neat way to brand also to show where um, our students have gone after after school. So. Here we got a picture of the baby. <laughs> yeah, it's a big picture. <laughs> <laughs> The only thing I, said, I buy tone it down. Okay. <laughs> that I love that like the principal's message though has a photo with it. Like I think that's really the visual combining. I mean yeah. it is fun. I'm sure it's super awkward. <laughs> it's actually really modern. Again, because we're visual learners in this one. One thing I because of that, because I'm a visual person, I might I don't know if this is I haven't looked at, at deep enough in age building, but like the principal's message and I'm on the high school webpage, the photo is of the middle school. That's that's on our list of things to address. So, yeah. so it, it will have eventually each correct school next to their their image. So yes, and then the yeah, a few of the pictures of the high school and the, on some of the websites. We're, we're fixing a few of those. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it's amazing. Thank you guys. Super super cool. If I had one critique, it would be the bell. The, the little bell on the side. I don't know what. It means. 
Oh, the bell. And it also overwrites other stuff when you move. Oh, it's the expand, just the expand. I know what it does, oh. but if I look at this from here, oh, what is that? Yeah, and I'm gonna say, so, so I would click on it, but I don't know. Yeah. It could, is there something else we could use with like the bell? I'll have to look because I'm not sure exactly which um, area you're. Could, could I could I come over? Yeah, there? Really, uh, yeah. This right here. Uh, okay. Oh, and it scrolls, which is, which is great, but then it sits over like when I take Oh, I see. Know, so. Okay. I, and, I'm sure. And, I, and I wouldn't know if I just came on this, like, what is that? So, <laughs> like, so, I'll add so up to our that's, I that. think what it's related to is the pop. So, yeah. yeah. It is related yeah. to the pop. Yeah. But to me, a bell means I have noticed the pop. Oh, yeah. sure. You we can make change the icon. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know that. I'm sure we could change the icon to something else. Another thing you might notice on there just Yes, sorry, it's, sorry. That's okay. Uh, just is the that the uh, website also has a section where you have your news and announcements. Um, and th that looks a lot different now, too. And what's nice about this is those look a lot. We simultaneously put that out to Facebook and Instagram, those, those, those news and announcements. And so it's much easier to do, and you can see it much better up this one. I don't know if you recall, but the icon that you would or a picture you would attach was very small. But if you go to the news and announcements now, it's a nice picture icon as well as the text is clear there as well. And you can click on it, it's just a clear navigate. And again, we're doing that simultaneously with Facebook and Instagram, and so they're all connected to the same. Works pretty well. That's exciting news about communication and engagement too, as well as our things. Thanks. Yep, you're welcome. Thank you for being sure. And the calendar of events, of course, we, I'll just highlight the two big ones. Staff among August 26th, students on August 28th. Key point of information that we'll be putting out in our building communications coming up. So 28th is a full day for students. No, so Wednesday, remember we did that last year, but we'll be, we're gonna do that again. Your first day is not a- uh, Early out. Yes, early out. Oh. Because so it would be an unusual. Yeah. Get, well, kind of get used to it. <laughs> get there early. We're first day, school day, but we'll be sending out. About it, that it would be short. The buildings will be sending out information about that. Um, yeah, but other than that, the, the staff will be on the 26th, and all of you are welcome to join us in their welcome bash. Uh, breakfast. breakfast and celebration service award celebration That's on the that. 26th. And if you arrive by 8 o'clock, we'll be. We won't get started until so we see. Okay. And it's a surprise, yes? There's something surprising happening, or is there not? Uh, we will have a presenter. You're saying you gotta beat it a little bit. Yeah, that's <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Uh, we will have a presenter there. slightly different format than yours has. Yeah, yes, yeah, definitely different than we've done in the okay. past. And just it's so bad last year. Stop it. I'm just joking. <laughs> we are excited about the first <laughs> We had good we've had good presenters in the past. <laughs> just it was a too good of a joke. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and then of course, jump right into the, the school year calendar. And of course, we've already talked about. Our upcoming board session on first And I can I just comment because I, I see Josh has gone through the calendar community guide, but I do not think that the high school graduation is on the calendar yet. It's still on the We're not sure if we're going to have one. We, might, <laughs> we don't have a graduate profile, therefore. Yeah, it's <laughs> oh, it's on the news and announcements, but it's just not on that. You know, when you click on the calendar, I think then pull down the next It's not like black. Like, or maybe is it on there? Is that where it should be? I don't know. Maybe it's not usually on the calendar. It's not on the Is it not usually on the school calendar that way? It's not on the school calendar. Okay, that's where I look for it. That's oh, so like how you would look for first day of school or Christmas break or whatever. No, it's, but it's not. It's not usually on there. Oh, okay. I for some reason just thought it was. It'll be on the other, the new upcoming thing. Just the events calendar, mm -hmm. not the actual. Okay. Okay. But okay. it may not be on there yet, but we'll check. I didn't check that calendar, so I'm not going I just looked at that. Okay. I will check it. For sure. uh, June first. June first. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'll look into that. Make sure. Sorry, June. 
Oh, that's 2024. Did you? <laughs> Yeah, it's my thankful. I appreciate that. Happening on the calendar. Very well. What June update? Yeah, just be on the main calendar. Yeah, it's going to be on the main calendar. Right. Otherwise, not. Should be on there. Those are approved typically a couple years in advance and even apply. Oh, maybe so. So, but yeah, no, it's not on. I wonder if we could always just do like an update or no. That's good. So I'll, I'll look into that for sure. I appreciate it. I'll bring it up okay. with the calendar committee. Person oh, right. and, <laughs> and we'll work on that. I thought we had it on there. I think it was put under news and announcements. It could be. Oh. All right. So, and, and then the list of transfers you have here is something. Um, just want to keep you up to date on uh, as we begin the school year. A lot of things happen in the spring and then, and then going into the falls. And so within the district where we, people might move within the building or, or to different buildings within the district. So this kind of list gives you an idea of where people are moving to. And we've had to make some shifts here just even in the last month or so, just because um, of some new positions that opened up here recently where um, we've been looking for to fulfill those positions and decided to go down a different route and, and internally make some shifts and so now um we're looking to fill all of our positions at the beginning of the year although there is one position uh, we're going to continue to work to try to fill but we uh, we had a late resignation uh, for our Center for Sustainability and Entrepreneurship. So we'll be working on filling that position to do our best to fill that. So still working on it. But you can see the list of resignations. I guess my question is um, just as I look at resignations and then the transfer, A, excuse me, that's a comment, one of the questions, there's a lot, is um, of transferring. <laughs> is, uh, are we short, Paris? Um, more so than usual, I guess. Yeah, not more so than usual. Okay. Say. No, in fact, actually doing probably better than last okay. year. But I think we go. We have two interviews this week, so that's a good start. Yeah. Okay, open positions for. Okay. Four. Four. That sounded way more confident than it felt this like that out loud. Um, <laughs> um, there are there are a few, but it is um, it's more it's manageable for you guys. Um, yeah, I think so. I mean, I think I mean, there are some positions that, uh, you know, we always look at student need first, and we've even had conversation about where where is student need currently. We've even had those conversations as late as today. So um, we'll continue to look at that. Um, we have great people who serve in a variety of creative ways, and, and um, the one thing I can guarantee is that um, we'll be meeting yeah, the needs of the students. Um, and, and we've got teachers who are who are making it happen. And of course, if you also know people, you know, we are we we want to hire good quality people too. So yeah. We're not just too well. Great. Fair answer, Dave. Hopefully that yes. summarizes what you were thinking. <laughs> I just want to ask that if that question comes up so it's like it's hard. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. We're not alone. Yeah. yeah. No, no, we aren't for sure. That's what I was curious that we're Okay, anything else for Dave? All right, on to Ms. Bichet. Mm -hmm. Financial report. Um, it's always a little bit different uh, in August of each year because we like to look at uh, <laughs> At the past year and see how we did as far the uh, as far as the expenditure budget and uh, one of my favorite things to look at how much did we reduce that um, you can see uh, uh, the bonds listed at the middle school bond of 2012 uh, was paid off a year ago uh, we just paid one of the two high school bonds, the one, the smaller of the two, of $4 million. 
and will add um, one more outstanding of $10 million. And of course, the mall down fund is still uh, outstanding. You can see that our principal reductions or how much we paid in principal. Principal was about just under $1.8 million. That's principal only. Interest is another $1.1 million. But that is uh, considered reduced by those principal reductions. Okay. And as requested at the last board meeting, I prepared a uh, short, brief summary of extracurricular activities costs. And I should have asked, do you have any questions about the appearance summary? I jumped uh, forward too quickly. Uh, so uh, uh, on top of uh, page one, we see all the tax levied funds that are budgeted. This is the expenditure budget showing how much we budgeted and how much we actually spent. Uh, notice the general fund, elementary and high school. I think we spent it down to the last one, five cents. <laughs> it's also uh, moving some money around as uh, the you know year is closed out in, in the account of records. It's to our advantage to spend it all down. Otherwise, it would be reappropriated. Mm -hmm. yeah. I didn't know that, so say it back. So if we let's uh, yeah. say fifty thousand dollars hypothetically less, which we didn't have, but hypothetically, we would either have to apply the fifty thousand dollars to next year's budget by which then it would be reduced. That's why we never want to do that. If there is an leftover money, we make a transfer into the interval of the fund mm -hmm. where money can go without any cap. Serves as a cash reserve. Mm -hmm. That wasn't the case this year, mm -hmm. but hypothetically. Okay. If you don't use it, you'll lose it in general. Mm -hmm. Any question on this first page? Moving on to page two, as requested at the last board meeting, um, here's a, a summary of extracurricular activities costs for the last three years. Um, I didn't go, uh, I didn't include more than three years in the analysis because we would go into COVID years where the Numbers were so skewed that they're really not they're not really telling the story. So here we are at the uh, fiscal year 22, 23, and 24. And you can see that student activities are funded by both the district and by students from their fundraising activities. The district pays the majority of those activities out of the general fund when there is not enough money. In the general fund, we use other funds. Okay. And you can see the percentage splits between how much the school district puts in and how much the student fundraising accounts put in. Uh, and I shouldn't say just fundraising accounts, these are also ticket sales and activity fee sales. Okay. So if even though we don't have any any uh, graph here, we can see by looking at the numbers that the trend in cost is upward, mm -hmm. right? We look at twenty one twenty two, it's just under eight hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> then we in twenty twenty three about fifty thousand dollars more. And now we're just under $1 million. That's the year that ended. And this does include, is this 9 through 12 or is this 7 through 12? As far as grades go, do you know? 
this is only high school activities. Okay. And the reason, and I should have said it in the heading, uh, I apologize. That's okay. This is only high school, and it's simply because uh, the percentage of budget that uh, middle school spends on activities is less than 1% of their budget. Okay. Whereas the high school spends over 9%. So I focused on high school. That's right. That's, kind of, that's, what, I, that's where. Yeah. Um, that's what I was hoping it was. I was hoping it was only high school. So that, yes, yeah. it is. Yes, okay. it is. Um, so thank you. So really just cool. you know, just a snapshot. It's not getting um, any uh, less expensive to go somewhere, and <laughs> and the more successful our students are the more travel and more accommodation costs there are. And I've noticed that hotel rooms are just too little, mm -hmm. even if you're using the camera. So uh, the travel piece of that uh, is really what is yes. very, very good. And more student participation, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, I thought it would be interesting because there was just an article in one of the daily dispatches and Great Falls has a 2% activities expense out of their general budget every night. So I thought that was really interesting. I don't know. Uh, district budget. Uh huh. And they're a much bigger there's, school. That's a much bigger budget. Because I'm still like, oh, it's a school versus the district, though. Right. That makes sense. So you said it's 9% of the schools? No. Versus it's oh, sorry, it's say. nine percent of high school, it's less than one percent for mm -hmm. elementary district, mm -hmm. but as a whole, it's three point eight percent. And I read those yeah. numbers yeah. right after uh you yeah. sent us the article, Darcy, uh -huh. about great falls. Okay, yeah. So I'm like, okay, how much it is how so that's it's yeah. three point eight. It's all a little bit closer to everything. Yeah. For transit. Yeah, they are central. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they're right. Really interesting. Yeah. Um, yes. I just thought it was interesting. I was just thought it was like, it was timely because I was asking yeah, for this information. And then I was yeah. like, oh. So you're right, district compared to the school yeah. budget. So 2.1 to 3.8 is still a pretty heavy oh, number. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yes, they are more centrally located yes. than we are. The location is, is we are located on that. Yeah, we should play in Canada or something. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's legal, but I think you're wrong. Me too. I'm watching. It's true. I think we draw the line. It is true. We have to travel further. I think, but another thing that we talked about last time in uh, the double A's met with MHSA and through the division of permits yeah. um, to, due to rising costs of transportation. Mm. Oh. So um, the, uh, the district, uh, we are, that's not going to happen this year for the A schools, but certainly could be something mm -hmm. that's explored in the future, I would imagine, mm -hmm. if that could be possible. Um, I did talk to uh, Eric recently about our travel. He said it looks like a better year than last year in terms of where we need to travel than travel, so that's good. But we are also meeting to discuss um, what is required in terms of our travel? What tournaments do we need to go to? And really looking at that across all of our activities and just looking at that thoroughly and seeing if there's anything we can do to reduce those costs. So, if they had no um, tournaments, would it just be who was the top three or, or however many they're taking? Yep. Just go on their record. Yeah, a lot of states are that way. You know, yeah. Though, I think Montana has come on to that divisional tournament mm -hmm. concept for quite a while. So, but a lot of states, you just where you end up during mm -hmm. your season is where, is where, where you go to the state tournament. You still have state. You still have you state. 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 Yeah, yeah, you, know, exactly. you just kind of like take yeah. out. Yeah. And the divisional is also like a weekend, usually, right? Like it's mm -hmm. a transportation of several nights out of town. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a, overall, it's a big event. Yeah. But I think it highlights. I, had, I didn't really. Is that interesting? Did I look to that? No, it highlights that there is a big concern in cost related to transportation. Yeah. 
And I heard rumors a couple years ago, I don't think it actually happened, but that the schools are talking about like boycotting Bozeman because it's so expensive to go there. So they're like, not like state in Bozeman anymore because a lot it of good reasons costs too much money. Um, you know, so I mean, it's just it's sad, but it's a chance. I mean, if you're Billings, you're just you're on the road all the time. Sure. Yeah, you're yeah. like whitefish, kind of. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that is the double A equivalent of us. I mean, like, he's not. I think you're two hours from the hospital. Like, I guess. It's not part of the year of Bozeman. It's not part of the year. Detail eight. Yeah, I did want to know. We'll be looking at that close. So, are there some like opportunities for games that aren't, like, you only have to play, I don't know, let's say, like, it's like five games, but there might be an opportunity to play seven games. Let's so say you could choose to go to other games or something. Is that kind of. When you say Eric's looking at the required amount of games for uh, I would be even if you're looking at the required amount of games for okay. the required participation. Okay. So just analyze them. Just so there are opportunities available that you could take, but you don't have to to still stay competitive. There, there might be some optional opportunities. Okay. I don't I was just curious. We need to look at that. Okay. Send one person over. <laughs> 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 Arm wrestle for her. Yeah, one person would be a lot cheaper than a team. Maybe I don't think we need a coach for well, maybe our okay. contract is. <laughs> 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 we do. Lucy, thank you very much yeah. for indulging yeah, my welcome. curiosity yeah, with that no, report. It was, uh, it was, I enjoyed doing this analysis because it was for what we. Oh, I thought that it was happening, mm -hmm. uh, but sometimes you want to see it in, you know, on paper, in numbers, say, is it just a feeling or is it real? Yeah, yeah. It's real. it is real. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, thank you. Okay, moving on to, and I'll be quick because it's 817, uh, and who wants to talk about numbers at 817? Yeah. 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 But page three. Um, a cash recap page. I, I revised it a little bit for this year. I included the June column as a baseline because before I had July through June as the whole year, and I always went, I don't remember when it was last year. So now we have the June number, so we can see uh, that's a nice baseline looking forward. Uh, and then um, not much going on in uh, revenues and expenditures, as you can see. Um, total of um, $700 plus $1,000 spent to date, um, of which the largest, uh, single largest item would be liability insurance. Uh, our annual liability insurance for about, I believe it was $170,000, Any questions? Thank you. Usually you are in of everything. <laughs> Sometimes it's just bad. <laughs> <laughs> As it comes to us, it looks good. Um, <laughs> I just want to one more thing, which has nothing to do with financial report, but um, uh, all the uh, election materials mm. has been delivered uh, from the printer. Um, all the envelopes have been rebuilt by them, so okay. we don't have to fail. Uh, we have to, however, uh, scan manually all 11,000 ballots and fill those. And those are already in house as well. And as Dave said before, um, all the ballots will be mailed on August 28th. That's probably an art project. That's a good art project. So, that's just the way. Thank goodness they know how sticky stamps. Yeah. Oh, good. Go back, go back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you, Lucy. Thank you. Um, on to the consent agenda. Is there any public comment on the consent agenda? Seeing none, is there a motion on the consent agenda? 
approve the completely empty percentage. <laughs> <laughs> Moved by Shannon. Seconded by Quincy. All in favor? Aye. Everybody. Uh, and one last motion. Moved by Quincy. Seconded by Katie. All in favor? Aye. That is everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Rainy. Safe travel. <laughs> Thank you. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. Oh, sorry.